All right, algebra two, 1.4, rewriting um, equations and formulas is what we're talking about now. All right, example one. We have uh, 7x minus 3y equals 8, and I'm saying solve for y. Okay, no problem. Um, we want to solve this problem for y. Um, there's two variables, so that means I need to get y by itself. So in order for me to get y all alone, all by itself, I need to move everything but that. So I'm going to start by moving this 7x. So to move that, since it's a positive 7x, I'm going to subtract the 7x on both sides. And when I do that, I still have a negative 3y left over, and I have a negative 7x plus 8. Now, I rewrote it that way because we can't combine those together. That is another common misconception that kids have. Lots of times on papers, you just see um, 8 minus 7, they just give you 1x. No. An x and a number cannot be combined together. You can't put them together. So this is negative 7x, and it's a positive 8, so you just write them just like that. Now, um, I need to get rid of that um, negative 3 in front of the y, and since it's negative 3 times y, the opposite of multiplication is division. So I divide both sides by negative 3, and I get y equals, and that means I have to divide each number by negative 3. So negative 7 is divided by negative 3. 8 is divided by negative 3. And since this is a negative over a negative, that becomes a positive. So it's 7 thirds x minus 8 thirds is when y is by itself. What are you looking at, butthead? Example 2, x plus xy equals 1. Solve for y when x equals negative 1. And then I want you to solve it when x equals 3. So when you guys see a problem like that, sometimes you assume that I mean I want you to plug in negative 1 and then plug in a 3 into the same problem. What I'm actually saying is first plug in just negative 1 for x. That's what I did. So I substituted a negative 1 in there for x. That's all I'm saying. Okay, we're going to do the other problem later. So now we just mean plug in a negative 1. So let's solve this problem for y. So to solve this problem for y, um, and I guess I'm showing you here that it's two separate problems by plugging a 3 in for x. To solve this for y, I would this isn't a negative 1, I'd add 1 to both sides. So we get negative y equals 2. And so that's multiplication, negative 1 times y, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1. So we get y equals negative 2. Over on this side, I want to get the y by itself. So since it's a positive 3, I would subtract 3 on both sides. So I get 3y equals negative 2. So 3 times y, the opposite of multiplication, is division. So divide both sides by 3, and I get y equals negative 2 thirds. Example four, your goal is to sell $25,000 in tickets. You plan to charge $25.25 per adult and expect to sell 800 adult tickets. You need to determine what to charge for children's tickets and how much should you charge per child if you expect to sell 200 child's tickets, 300 child tickets, 400 child tickets. So anyway, you expect 800 people, right? And you want to charge $25.25 for adult. Per means multiply, so that's why I multiply those together. So we instantly know that right there we made $20,200, but I need to make $25,000. So I subtract the two to find out that I need to make $4,800. Okay, no problem. I have $4,800 left over, and I'm predicting that I would like to sell 200 tickets. So I'm trying to figure out what the price per ticket should be per kid. So if 200 kids are coming in, I'm going to divide both sides by 200 to solve it. But what if I predict that 300 kids are coming in? Then I would divide both sides by 300. Well, what if I predict that 400 kids are coming in? Well, then I would divide both sides by 400. So the point that I'm getting at is there's three different problems that this uh, is asking for. So we divide this both sides by 200. Um, and the reason why I put the division sign underneath all of them is because it's the same. This is 200 times C. The opposite of multiplication is division. So I divide that one by 200. This is 300 times C. So I'm going to divide both sides by 300 in that problem. 
this is 400 times C. So I'm going to divide both sides by 400. The 200s cancel. The 300s cancel. The 400s cancel. So I have left if, for some reason, 200 kids were coming, I'd have to charge 24 bucks per ticket. If 300 kids were coming, I'd have to charge $16 per ticket. And if 400 people were coming, I'd charge $12 a ticket. They're laughing at us. Hey, they laughed at Louis Armstrong when he said he was going to go to the moon. Now he's up there laughing at them. Common formulas, the distance. You need to know the distance formula. That's D equals RT, where distance, D stands for distance, R stands for rate, and T stands for time. You need to know simple interest formulas. I equals PRT. Um, I stands for interest. Uh, P stands for principal, the amount of money you put in. R stands for rate, and T stands for time. Temperature, this one is harder to remember. Uh, Fahrenheit, which is F, equals 9 over 5 times Celsius plus 32. F stands for Fahrenheit. C stands for Celsius. Area triangle you should remember from last year in geometry. That's one half times the base times the height. Area of a rectangle you should remember. That is length times width or base times height, whichever one you want to use. Area of a trapezoid might be harder for you to remember, but that's one half times both of the bases added together times the height. So why don't you make like a tree and get out of here? So when I come back, I'll go over the rest of the uh, common formulas that we talked about, and we will finish up 1.4.